Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the VIA Pioneer Speaker Series. So this is the monthly speaker series in which VIA features one of the pioneers in the world, one of the pioneers working with character strengths. And as you know, we're in the midst of our specialty track on education. So this track features the some of the best people, whether it's practitioners or researchers or educators on teaching others about character strengths in the world of education. So training uh, teachers and schools, children and youth. And I'm, I'll, in a moment, I'll, I'm very pleased that I'll be able to introduce to you uh, Justin Robinson. Uh, and before I do that, I'd like to uh, remind everybody that you can feel free to ask me questions. Uh, it really, uh, the questions will go to Justin, but you can send them through me. So, so my email is there at the bottom, ryan at viacharacter.org. So please email me, and I'm, I'll be happy to uh, ask Justin those questions, uh, and taking those that might be most applicable to the most people, and uh, and we'll, we'll we'll handle those. Justin will handle some of those questions at the at the very end of the talk. And I also want to note. The uh, many of you have been waiting for this, and v very very soon, next week actually, Via is going to launch its first brief youth survey and a youth report, and so it's very exciting. We have a a, with, uh, a validated brief youth measure, so the the uh, the youth survey that people can take right now it's. It's uh, 198 questions, and so that survey is going to be less than half of that in the future. It'll be only about 90. It'll be 96 questions, and it's uh, still for youth between the ages of 10 and 17. So that's the the brief youth survey that's going to be launched next week that we'll let you know about, and then also there's going to be a youth report that people can uh, purchase, and so so teachers and and uh, Parents and youth um, will be interested in uh, a deeper dive into their into their strengths, and we also have accompanying uh, teacher guides and parent guides um, that we will be giving people for free actually uh, if uh, they purchase the report. So also check out our site for some of the latest workshops. We have a, our interactive VIA workshop next week uh, that's starting up, and you can go to viapros.org to learn more. So uh, with that, uh, I'm very, very happy to inter introduce to you just a wonderful human being and a, a very bright and brilliant presenter uh, named Justin Robinson. And I'm just so happy because he's from the one of the world leading schools when it comes to positive education. Uh, and so many of you have heard of this school. Uh, it's sort of become synonymous when uh, people think of positive education, they think of this school. And of course, I'm talking about Geelong Grammar School, uh, which uh, Justin can tell you more about, but it's a private school uh, near Melbourne, Australia. And I had the, the privilege of being able to visit Geelong Grammar School a couple years ago and uh, speak with some of the staff and uh, learned uh, about the number of different, some of the different work with character strengths that they're doing in addition to other positive education approaches and uh, just a, a wonderful campus and doing such innovative work and so I'm just, that's why you can maybe sense my excitement in, in having Justin on the call. And Justin actually is the head of the school, so he's the head of positive education at the school and he, it's a position that he's had, uh, the head of Pez of Education, uh, for the last three years and has been spending his time applying the science of positive psychology in the school. And he's coordinated the development of Geelong Grammar School's um, positive education program as a whole and uh, has led staff training and co-created a model for positive education. He's developed well-being curriculum, coordinated teaching teams, overseen research, and embedded positive psychology into all aspects of school life. So quite a lot of different activities there. Uh, he's passionate about student and staff well-being and finds great purpose and meaning in this role. And uh, Justin uh, has a, a master's in education from Monash University and has over 20 years of teaching experience and has held numerous school leadership positions dedicated to supporting student and staff well-being. So uh, without further ado, thanks so much for being here, Justin. 
Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, and thanks for the opportunity. Although I, I must say you had a little slip at the start when you said that I was the head of the school. And just in case our principal, uh, Stephen Meek, is listening, I must clarify that I'm certainly not... Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. The principal of the school. <laughs> uh, but certainly, you know, thoroughly enjoy my role and the exciting role of being the head of implementing and embedding positive education at Geelong Grammar School. Uh, and, and I look forward to Ryan kind of to sharing uh, through this talk our, our experiences at Geelong Grammar School uh, with the people listening and, and look forward to uh, answering some questions at the end. So if you're happy, we'll, we'll jump straight into it. Sounds great. So I start on the next slide, Ryan, with a, just a photo. Um, and it's a photo of a lovely sunset uh, here at Geelong. And this story, I think, kind of just illustrates how much the language of character strengths has become embedded into our school culture. Um, and the story actually relates to James Powelski, who no doubt many listeners will know as the director of the MAP program at Pennsylvania and the executive director at IPA. And he was visiting it and staying with us for a few days back in 2010. And he was actually just walking over to our house on campus to have a drink with us before dinner. And he had only just arrived, only been here a few hours, and certainly uh, none of the students were aware of who he was or had been, he hadn't been introduced yet to the student body or even to the staff. And he was simply walking across to our, our home, and one of the students uh, actually called him over, even though he was a stranger to our community, called him over and said, um, have a look at this beautiful sunset and they kind of savoured this sunset together and then actually turned to James and said, now that's using your character strength of appreciation of beauty and excellence and James was quite gobsmacked by the time he knocked on our door and arrived at our door he said, I've, I've only been here uh, literally an hour or two and people are kind of using the language of character strength with me, have you set this up at all? <laughs> and, uh, so it was just a nice little example uh, of the students having such a common language in our community, having a com common language that we're now benefiting from. So as we move then to give you an overview of what I'd like to talk about, Ryan, uh, the idea is if I start by just briefly explaining where and how character strengths fit into our model for positive education, then to share with you key aspects of the language we use around character strengths. And predominantly the, the talk will kind of focus on examples of character strengths in action at, here at Geelong Grammar School. And was hoping to then just close with some food for thought to leave us all pondering kind of many of the rich messages uh, which are involved when we kind of talk and discuss character strengths. Certainly my hope, Ryan, is that teachers and, and others who are listening will be able to use some of these ideas to build upon them, to tweak them, as Jenny Fox Eads kind of mentioned in her presentation, to adapt them and, and therefore to allow uh, people around the world to bring the language and application of character strengths to life uh, in school communities but in, in global communities. So just checking, Ryan, the, the volume and everything all coming through okay? Sounds great, yeah. Okay. Very clear. So on the next slide, on the next slide we have our model for positive education. Uh, and this has been developed at Geelong Grammar School over the last uh, four years and certainly been influenced by our experiences, our reading, and certainly the contribution from our expert visitors over the time. And many people will look at this and certainly see close synergy with Ligman's PERMA model. And at the goal at the centre of the model here is to assist individuals, which will in turn help groups, teams, classes and ho our whole school community to flourish. The six domains which you can see around the model, um, is that's what we do our work in, in our explicit classes. Uh, called positive education. Students from years five through to year 10 have a timetabled subject called positive education where we will explore uh, these topics uh, and deepen and encourage students to investigate and to uh, complete activities which will build those domains. And you'll notice in the blue ring that the kind of where the way we talk about it is these six domains are underpinned by the important and accessible field of character strengths. 
that of course through using and developing our strengths we can experience increased levels of well-being uh, in each of these domains. Also of course I think just having a strengths perspective is certainly uh, complementary to the positive psychology uh, approach that we're taking with positive education. So the next slide tries to show you uh, a sample of how we'd like our students to think of what we call kind of in shorthand language simply POSED and that's certainly the, the term that's used throughout the school by students, staff and parents. Uh, so I think they're quite short definitions but I think they're powerful definitions about kind of what POSED does. We would hope that our young students, our junior school students would kind of say something along the lines of that POSED helps you and others to feel good and do good. And, and I see there are going to be four kind of key sections to that little quote. Of course we're doing this to help you and your well-being but also to help those the well-being of those around you and for you to contribute to the well-being of others around you. Uh, and the feel good and do good is our simplistic way of saying flourishing at this school based on Felicia Huppert's work of the, the importance of feeling good about oneself, of uh, competence and hope and optimism but also of functioning effectively which we uh, with the students have come classify as feeling good and doing good. Uh, and possibly more a senior school student, maybe like a year 10 or a year 11 student, uh, may refer to this idea of POSEDs giving you a deeper understanding. Uh, we, we like this concept of going deeper, uh, but learning more about yourself and of course others. So it's self-awareness, but it's also the development of empathy uh, and the empathy for others. So the next slide, again just as some examples, gives some key phrases which talks about uh, the idea that positive education, that positive psychology, that character strengths will give you new ideas to think about, to ponder. We aim to try to kindle the student's curiosity. Uh, we encourage them not to dismiss the science, not to dismiss the concepts uh, immediately and so on, but to have an open mind uh, and to uh, have a, their best attempt at an activity to see how that works for them. Uh, and as Seligman kind of talks about uh, the idea of knowing thyself, that quite often we know plenty about ourselves, but maybe one of the things we often don't know about ourselves are our strengths and so that where it ties in nicely this idea of knowing as much about oneself as possible and having uh, a complete picture of our strengths. The next slide Ryan talks uh, of course a sim simplified view but just trying to give you some examples of our language around POSED and then particularly the language around strengths. Uh, of course a simplified view of psychology and positive psychology but where positive psychology the science of well-being uh, endeavours to explore what is right with you and what is best in people to uh, allow people to, to live a fulfilling and rich life. The final, the, the next slide Ryan just purely has your big acronym and you might think I'm just trying to uh, promote the VIA Institute uh, which I am. Uh, but this actually, Ryan, is an authentic slide taken exactly from our staff presentations and or our student presentations. We do have a slide almost whenever we talk about character strengths that simply says that and we particularly emphasise the acronym that obviously is well known to everyone uh, listening. And I, I think when students have a, a grasp of that acronym, I think it answers many questions about the ability to develop uh, strengths. What if you don't like your strengths and so on. So this idea, it's all about the strengths or the values we are actioning. So moving on to some of the common language we have around strengths at GGS. The first dot point, and I'm sure uh, many of us listening uh, would believe this statement, we emphasise to the students that we believe that all 24 character strengths exist within each of us. We all have the ability to action them, uh, to use them, to draw upon them. The, the kind of richness of the end in the second bullet point is what I want to draw upon, uh, that your strengths are stable and dynamic, which of course is you know, a contradiction. 
and we talk to students, well, if nothing particularly significant happens in your life, then most likely your strengths will be relatively stable. But significant events, whether uh, in your control or out of your control, so whether uh, changes in your uh, life situation, um, whether you've done intentional activities that you certainly can make, of course, your strengths dynamic and increase uh, and, of course, decrease the action and the amount that you draw upon and use your individual strengths. The third dot port. Uh, bullet point, the, the word I'd like to underline would be just the word develop, that you can nurture, develop, grow strengths, and I'll give examples of, of that in action at Geelong Grammar. And of course the idea of that uh, our strength use lies on a continuum, uh, and the way that Ryan, your institute, and talks about kind of the golden mean, uh, and often the importance is getting the correct uh, use, the correct amount of using a character strength. The next slide shows a metaphor. Um, one way we try to assist our students understanding character strengths is through the use of metaphors. And often we use the orchestra metaphor. Uh, this photo is a photo of our symphony orchestra in action. And whilst there are only four families of instruments in a uh, symphonic orchestra, uh, the woodwind, the strings, the brass and the percussion, uh, and not quite the six virtues. Uh, and of course within each family of instruments, there are multiple instruments, for example, the trombone, the trumpet, the French horn, the euphonium, and the tuba are all present, whilst you can't quite see them in this picture, which is kind of dominated by the string section. Uh, they are there in some of the back rows. And uh, the, the idea we talk about with this, of, of using an orchestra analogy, is the richness and beauty of the sound of a full orchestra in flow. And whilst a movement may predominantly call on the string family, and maybe even in particular the violins. Uh, but there are times when the, the conductor, which is in, in our metaphor, which is you, you need to quieten the strings down and call on more from the oboes or the clarinets. Uh, and whilst played rarely, the all important triangle or the big clash of the cymbals certainly add to the quality of the piece. And so knowing when to quieten strengths to increase the volume of different strengths, uh, to play a strengths uh, instrument uh, at the right time for the right situation. And other metaphors that students have used are kind of a bag of golf clubs with the different golf clubs being the 24 strengths, uh, a quiver of arrows, a box of coloured pencils. So allowing kind of middle school students to kind of come up with a metaphor, an image for them that allows them to think of uh, this suite of strengths that we have available to us, uh, we find a valuable activity. Just before I move on to some examples, uh, the next slide Brian talks about the wheel of character strengths. And we certainly, as a community, we have many conversations around thinking of your strengths on a wheel. Uh, we find at times the ranking from 1 to 24 and the kind of vertical printout can kind of be misleading to some of our students who believe that maybe their bottom strengths, they just don't have them at all, uh, which I believe, we believe certainly is, is not true. So on the next slide you'll see an example of um, a strengths wheel that the students could fill out and write in what they classify as their signature strengths, their, their next kind of complementary or sequel strengths and then fill in of course the other strengths and then being aware that this strengths wheel and I often kind of have hand movements kind of around the, the chest area that you know, this is where the strengths are lying kind of here in your heart here in your body that there'll be times you'll need to spin the dial of the strengths wheel to get the, the right strength or the right complementary strengths kind of in action at the right time uh, we're also looking at the moment if rather than having each uh, pi having the same amount of degrees to it, to we're just doing an image that has the signature strength uh, segments uh, larger right at the top of the, the strengths wheel, the sequel strengths on either side, a couple of sequel strengths on either side uh, with slightly smaller pi segments and then again smaller pi segments again of the other character strengths to kind of indicate that the signature strengths, you, know, you probably do play to them more, it's important that you use them and aware of them and play to them more um, and hence maybe they get a slightly uh, larger representation in the pie chart. 
The next more colourful picture of the, the strengths wheel, uh, this is the concept of uh, having several of these wheels just present around the school. And they can be used in a couple of different ways. Uh, one, we could uh, spin the wheel or spin the dial and see what strength it lands on. And then simply a staff member or a student could kind of ask or lead some pertinent questions. When did you last action this strength? Can you think of a student in this class who embodies this strength at the moment? How could we use this strength in this lesson? Uh, but another powerful way is just having that there present and available. Uh, and maybe the staff member or a student is at some stage just quietly walking over to the wheel and just moving the dial to a different strength because they've just, uh, without having to mention anything, just saying that they've uh, seen that strength that's currently been action. Uh, I think it's quite a powerful uh, uh, action in itself. And the next slide, Ryan talks about, of course, uh, the idea of the important conversations that we've been able to have in our community through having a VIA survey and VIA survey reports. Um, they become rich conversations and this is where we must ensure these continue to happen to give depth to what have you learnt about yourself, what are you curious about yourself, how are you using them, understanding the shadow side. Uh, so in my mind there's certainly no doubt that the introduction of explicitly introducing the language of character strengths has contributed to the well-being of our community. So that's trying to give you a snapshot of the language that we use and how we talk about strengths in our community. The next slide introduces the way that I'd like to kind of just share examples of this in action. And so there are, I've categorised them in, in six different ways. Uh, so we'll start by just talking about you know, how we explore the different character strengths, move on to owning your own ones and how a community can own their signature strengths, the important aspect of nurturing and growing character strengths, spotting strengths in action and closing with uh, just uh, strengths use for individuals and for groups. So the first one about exploring character strengths. Of, of course, as all 24 strengths are universally valued, it makes sense that we just spend time with our students and our community exploring, getting to know each of these strengths. Of course, our junior school students, some of the, the names of those strengths they'll be unfamiliar with. Uh, and they won't even necessarily have a, a rich, full understanding of you know, the word kindness, which of course they understand. Uh, but to see that word in its uh, fullness. And so, for example, in our junior school classes, uh, they've sequenced the introduction of the 24 strengths. So uh, our junior school campus here in Geelong, we've got, uh, Geelong uh, has four different campuses, uh, and our junior school campus in Geelong, they have their preps, which are the first year of students entering school, they just introduce four different strengths. And those four strengths, they do kindness in term one, social intelligence, which of course classified more as friendship in term two, love and the capacity to love and be loved in term three, and teamwork in term four. And so they you know, will devote a wall of their classroom to exploring that strength. They'll talk about it, have activities that go home um, with, they do it through uh, picture story books, through some of their creative writing. They will spend time focusing and exploring on a particular strength. In year one, the students then are introduced to another four strengths and so they're up to eight strengths. And in year two, another four strengths. So kind of just focusing at different stages throughout our kind of education on the particular strengths. But also then just fun games, you know, playing charades and guessing the strength, playing the game taboo where you're not allowed to say certain words and for the students to say, well, what words can't you say for the strength of uh, modesty and humility that's going to make it hard to describe this? Or well, playing Pictionary. The next two bullet points, uh, we emphasise these with all our students, this idea of you know, thinking of when would you require this strength? Because some students kind of you know, 
they may be prioritised different strengths in different ways. They kind of think it's quite cool uh, to have the strength of humour and playfulness and love and be loved, but not so cool to have prudence. Uh, so it's important before we even get into doing via surveys with students, understanding why prudence is a character strength and on which scenarios you'd need to draw on and call upon the use of that strength. And of course, actions, because this is the key emphasis on the VIA acronym. So how could you action the strength of fairness at home, uh, in a classroom, in your boarding house? I like the concept of our students having goes at writing their own definitions before they see an official kind of VIA definition. Um, if you were to write some survey questions, and, and Ryan's fantastic to hear about the, the new validated youth survey. Um, and whilst none of our, our students' questions have been validated in any way, but the richness of just the students exploring, well, so what questions would I ask if, as a group, we're trying to do people action the strength of curiosity? Uh, and maybe more with our senior school students, understanding uh, Marty's and Chris's criteria that they used for developing their list of 24 strengths. So some images follow Ryan, uh, just to flick through to again to bring them to life. The next one shows, uh, this is our staff playing charades and they're trying to action and get other groups to guess which character strength they're doing, which in this case is zest, uh, if you're not sure. But the power of this photo for me is it's got teaching staff and non-teaching staff. It's one of the activities that we do as part of our three-day training course for all staff at the school. It's got staff from different campuses. Uh, and the enjoyment on their faces, the interactions uh, through exploring and discussing strengths. The next photo is just of our juniors uh, clearly doing a brainstorm uh, and exploring the character strength of humour and what that means to these group of five boys. So the second category is this concept of owning your signature strengths. And I think this is critically important um, that yes, critical to understand that there are 24 character strengths and to know them and know them quite deeply. But vitally important also to know what your signature strengths are. Now, I had to, and probably earlier we, uh, in previous years, would jump into VIA surveys uh, sooner. We probably now uh, hold back on the student making the survey and firstly say, well, Let's get some perspectives from your own gut feel and from those around you who know and love you. Um, and so whether it's just showing a list of the 24, whether it's having conversations, but what do grandparents, what do mum and dad say, what do some siblings say, your friend in class, your friend in the boarding house, your tutor, uh, what do they say would be some of your signature or top strengths? When we finally get them to own them, we, we do encourage them to sign them. Uh, not quite as relevant for students because students often don't have their own signature, but obviously as adults we have a signature that flows off our hand that we can kind of do with our eyes closed that pretty well comes out the same way each time. And that idea of a signature, we're kind of saying to students, we want those strengths to be that comfortable for you in their use. Uh, so the next one, Ryan, and um, this certainly hasn't quite taken off yet, uh, but the, the idea of this acronym that we're having a little play with which came to us of uh, thinking about signature strengths. Of course we mentioned top five and top strengths but we prefer to you know, really use the language of your signature strengths and then let's understand uh, what the criteria uh, that the experts in the field have given for what classifies as a signature strength. Uh, and I'm sure many of the listeners know these criteria. We had a little bit of fun kind of putting it into the, the vows of the AEIOUs uh, and so the bottom bullet point Ryan says that a signature strength means that it must energise you. You intrinsically choose to use it and action it. You can't help but find opportunities and that you feel true to who you are or that you kind of can't help but use it and this is who you are, this makes sense to you and that kind of feels therefore like a signature strength. So 
whilst it's kind of a, a complex acronym uh, and the A doesn't really make sense at all, but that's the introduction to it. Uh, the idea of the EIOU, if a student can go, does it energise me? Do I intrinsically, do I use it? Do I find opportunities and does it feel true to who I am? Then that might be a helpful way of them thinking about their signature strengths. The next slide is a snapshot of um, a student's home page on the internet here at Geelong Grammar School. Um, to assist students with owning their signature strengths, we endeavour to keep them uh, in the student's mind. And on a front page, this is their own individual student's front page, and it will have the calendar of the day and various news events, and they can click onto each of their subjects and see homework and activities. In the bottom left-hand corner, we just simply have what their signature strengths are. Uh, and a couple of things I'd like to point out just on this picture. One is that we do put a date on it, and I think that's important to show that this concept that signature strengths are not fixed in stone. And so for this student, these, uh, this person took the strength survey back in 2010. It then has a, a link to what we just call our GGS list of 24 character strengths. That's just with us choosing the synonym that kind of best fits our language with the um, official definitions. Uh, written by uh, Seligman and Peterson. And then also, and you'll notice, and I'm plugging you it again, uh, Ryan, uh, a couple of links, and the link to the VIA character, because a student might just be curious at that point of time and want to do a little bit more uh, personal uh, exploration around strengths or possibly to retake a survey on their own accord. So staff and students, uh, not yet all, but students from year 10 onwards and the majority of our staff uh, have this available and up on their home page. The next slide then, just again a couple of photos before we move to the next section. Uh, this one again is a photo from our staff training, uh, just taken in January uh, during our summer uh, break. We come back a bit early early and staff who have not yet received the training, teaching or non-teaching staff, new staff to our, our school embark on these multiple day training courses in positive psychology. And this is the way we finish kind of uh, day three and finish our exploration after many rich conversations around uh, character strengths with a signature strength circle. And each person in that circle is holding hands with someone who has a identical one identical signature strength to them whether that be curiosity, whether it be zest. Uh, and so people yell out, and it only takes about four or five minutes for this circle to form. As people yell out what their strengths are, they find one in common, they hold that hand and they're yelling out what other possible ones that their signature strengths are. People are moving in between, yes, I've got that one, I can link on hands. Uh, we then kind of finish with running in together and running out and yelling out and lifting our hands up and celebrating what the strength is that we share with a colleague. So a fun activity that you know, uh, I'd encourage others to, to use and introduce. The next slide uh, is our middle school students uh, owning their signature strengths through a shield of strengths. Uh, and I know that some students kind of who maybe now three or four years on from this happens in year seven, uh, maybe still have that shield of strength somewhere up in their, their room uh, and refer to that. So the third section then is once from then an individual owning their signature strengths so that they can use them, is communities owning their signature strengths. And uh, the different groups in our community are encouraged to go, well, collectively, what are the signature strengths of the group? Uh, and then how can we creatively represent our signature strengths? Um, and so in particular, um, where Maybe it's a class, maybe it's a boarding house, maybe it's a year level, maybe it's a campus. Uh, we will look at exploring what strengths exist at the moment uh, as signature strengths in that community. Again, some more photos, Ryan. Uh, the first one, uh, simply with some strength posters uh, developed by Bert Van Halen here in Victoria uh, and staff 
uh, this is a staff example and a non-teaching staff example where they wrote down their signature strengths and then went and put their post-it notes around the various posters and just to see the visual and for us to maybe keep that up in a training space for some time for our community to reflect over. The next slide uh, is a simple but creative radar graph that you can simply do in, in Excel. Uh, and this is a boarding house community, the boarding house of Manifold here at Geelong Grammar School and the year 10 students. And you can see that actually all 24 strengths, someone does have one of the, each of those strengths in their signature strengths, whilst only one student there with fairness and only one there with uh, open-mindedness only a couple with spirituality and then talk about the richness of what this radar graph talks. It may give an idea of which strength they would like to nurture collectively as a community. Um, so I think that's another nice creative diagram. The next slide is uh, another example of our staff training and to see kind of the volume of people sticking post-it notes on uh, uh, large posters and seeing where our signature strengths lie within our community. And the last one is student initiative, uh, online program with wordles and taxidos, uh, this idea of the size of the word is indicating the, the amount of uh, the number of people in that community actioning that strength as a signature strength. Uh, and when you have the colour, this was from Hermie House, a girl's house where their house blazer colour is, is green uh, and the richness of the different shades of green uh, that give a, a, a strong picture of the strengths of a community. So moving to number four, uh, the idea of how we then nurture character strengths. So we've spoken about owning signature strengths and now talk about nurturing. And starting by individuals choosing to nurture a particular strength. We're only at the early stages of trying to uh, develop a habit of maybe students keeping a strength log when they um, think of trying to develop a particular strength. And, and I think that strength log ideally should be maybe kept for you know, three to six months. Uh, and there's reflections that go on in that journal and there are uh, clear examples of when they've actioned it and then maybe they put some drawings and they kind of reflect on did it work when they actioned it and how they feel that strength is kind of growing and developing in them. Of course having groups of students brainstorm ways to build strengths uh, and providing st students with a prompt and all staff members with a prompt of the strength that they're trying to just stay very conscious of uh, for a particular time, a, a, a week, um, a month. And so whether that be through a wristband that has the name of the strength on the wristband, uh, a card they keep in their pocket or their wallet or uh, somehow using for staff, you know, their Outlook calendar to kind of send reminders or ways just to prompt people, remember you're trying to develop this strength, so let's keep thinking about that and keeping that front and centre. The next four slides, Ryan, uh, show just a, a quick example of a student's presentation to her class about one of the strengths she chose to nurture. And as much as I think the power of you know, just a student sharing with her uh, group, with her team, uh, what openly, what strength they would like to develop can only be a good thing. It engenders support from the others, awareness from her friends uh, who can then encourage that journey as this person chose to say, I'd like to nurture the strength of spirituality. And so the next slide then and the way we encourage our students to think about nurturing is then, well, so why to, to do that, you know, you'd need to have some benefits uh, that you would experience. So what would be the possible benefits? And, and I won't read those bullet points, uh, but this idea about this is what this person has chosen, this year 10 girl, in her words about why she would like to nurture spirituality. The next slide then says, well, how am I going to do it? And I'm not even 100% sure of what some of those phrases mean but they have meaning to this girl, which was Sophie. So keeping things in perspective, she can relate that to nurturing the strength of spirituality. 
So after thinking of possible benefits and the ways of nurturing, the next slide says the heading of, well, what are the possible benefits beyond self? Uh, because I influence others' well-being and the contagion effect, so also I'm nurturing spirituality not just for myself, but also for the benefit of others. Um, and then finally, that the fourth heading becomes this idea of, well, are there any costs? And of course, I think whenever you focus on one thing, of course there are trade-offs. So we also encourage our students to think while they're nurturing one, are there some possible costs? Um, and that second bullet point, you know, I think that's a, a powerful comment and, and it's worthwhile the student being aware of that and, and talking to the, the, her, her friendship group uh, in the boarding house and saying, oh, I have some concerns that maybe people will take my spirituality the wrong way. Now I don't know what the wrong way means and I don't need to, but Sophie is concerned about that and wanted to express that and, and add a conversation around that. So as we move on to the next slide, Ryan, then of course the concept of a community also nurturing a strength at the one time. And hence we've owned our signature strengths maybe as a community, we'd like to have an entire focus on um, leadership as a strength, kindness, appreciation of beauty and excellence, you can have a photo competition uh, uh, around where we spot beauty uh, and excellence in action. And of course, different groups, an individual sporting team could have a, a real focus on uh, a character strength of bravery and show the richness of that in action. So then photos bringing that to life on the next slide, Ryan. Uh, the example I'm using here is uh, various groups around our school trying to action the strength of gratitude. This is a photo of the middle school boys boarding house uh, where uh, a, a cover over the, the pool table, a what went well board. Uh, and each Sunday at the end of the um, after assembly on a Sunday evening, the students and staff will read out and share some of these uh, blessings that have happened during the week. Then they're rubbed off and the board starts again and for the next week, students, staff, anyone in that community can, are very happy to write down and share what went well. The next slide is uh, an image of our board up at Timbertop, our year nine campus uh, in the foothills of the Australian Alps, um, which has our students, again, it's just open and available. And we were worried when we introduced this two or three years ago, would students take this seriously, would students misuse it? Uh, and 99% you know, of the time we felt it's been beautifully used by the community. And so there's just a texter there, uh, anybody in that community can write, uh, walk past and write down something that went well. The next image uh, is a photo of our year six gratitude lunch. Uh, where the grade six students spend time planning, inviting, preparing, they cook the meal, they decorate the room, a lunch for the key support staff and admin staff who assist their day at school. Uh, so in that photo you'll see receptionists, matrons, cleaners, gardeners, nurses and the students are expressing their gratitude uh, to them. As we move on to number five, spotting character strengths um, and the richness of ways and the, the, the enjoyment of spotting strengths in actions, whether this be through stories, books, movies, but then with people to see a friend action a strength and to comment and congratulate them on the use of a strength um, is a lovely thing to do. The bottom bullet point there in particular, uh, Ryan, uh, and it refers me to Denise Quinlan wrote an article uh, uh, on the IPA News Daily uh, email about 24 ways to like a difficult child and she was just referring to the 24 strengths and it's a lovely article. Uh, and we encourage our staff to think about challenging students and challenging colleagues and still trying to spot strengths in, in them. Uh, so we have an activity we do with staff in our staff training. You know, think of a colleague that you, you maybe don't get along so well with, that you kind of don't either have things in common or you have had some difficulties in the past. Well, what strengths do they still have? What strengths do you still see in them and you see them action? And suddenly when you have, uh, that can shift your focus to an appreciative focus still of students and colleagues. 
So some photos again, Ryan, to, to bring this idea of spotting strengths to action. Uh, this is a photo of Daryl Morford. He's our head of our junior school campus. Uh, and the image done by, I think it was preps or year one students, their picture that they did of, of Daryl Morford. He's uh, the head of the campus. And the students then spot what strengths they see in Daryl. Um, what strengths they see the him action. The next photo shows students, uh, senior school students, our year 10 students kind of writing uh, strengths that they see people spot and action uh, on, the, on one another's backs. And, and some of just you know, um, the interactions of touch and the close that you know, that has is I think again another powerful but simple activity. On the next slide, the idea of welcoming new members to our community. Uh, sometimes a, a student may join us partway through the year, and after two or three weeks, a staff member say, may say to the class, uh, without maybe the new student being aware, you know, "What strengths have you seen this uh, new student action?" And suddenly compiling those and reading them out and allowing that student to take those authentic uh, peer responses back home going, well, mum and dad, this, this is what my uh, peers at my new school have kind of feel that uh, a bit about who I am. And a new staff member, I think that's a powerful way. Uh, many schools would have when a, st a staff member starts at their school that they would be allocated mentors to, to look after them and, and assist them to uh, uh, become comfortable in the new school environment. We have a mentor who's an academic mentor uh, for the correct uh, academic department and also a pastoral mentor uh, for their boarding house. And so this is just, you know, and I'll let, allow you to read them, but where suddenly after the staff member has been here a term to receive an email or to be recognised uh, in a staff meeting and to hear the, again, authentic words from colleagues saying what strengths they've seen a new member of staff action. The next slide is an example of our middle school boarding houses where they ask their parents to write a story of their son or daughter for a girls boarding house at their best. And again, many of the listeners will be well aware of this, uh, the power of this activity. I include the text uh, just purely if it is of some use of the way that uh, Simon Haig, the head of Barrable House here, uh, wrote his letter to his parents. And, and the way Simon explains to me the richness of them, the conversations and uh, when we share those stories back with the students and in small groups and then try to say, well, what strengths do you see in that story that the parent has shared? Uh, the final slide, uh, before we move to the final uh, category, uh, shows Ryan just this idea of uh, strengths of the playground is the way we talk about it in our, our junior school. And so let's get these strengths out and about in the playground to think about our use of strengths even as we play together. Um, and I think, you know, particularly in a, in a junior school classroom, a junior school playground, uh, we found that to be quite beneficial. So the final category is about using character strengths. Um, and here we're talking about reflecting on personal use and if certainly thinking of your strengths as resources that you've got available for you to use. Do you want to call on the cymbals, the oboes, the violins? Call on your strengths, action them. And of course this idea of using your strengths in adversities, in difficult times, but we'll structure lessons and worksheets around scaffolding that to allow students to really think, well, what difficulty am I experiencing at the moment? What challenge am I facing? Go back to what are those signature strengths I have, what other strengths could I potentially draw upon, and what way forward am I going to try to uh, work on this challenge? Of course, the importance of using signature strengths in a new way. Certainly, Ryan, as the research shows, that just knowing your strengths necessarily doesn't increase your well-being levels, but the idea of actioning them on, regular, on a regular basis and in new ways and reflecting on your use certainly is beneficial to one's well-being. So hopefully that's given some examples of it in action. Uh, just a couple of other sections, Ryan. The next one is titled about student-led initiatives. Uh, and, and I just really want to encourage listeners to involve their students as much with well-being initiatives and activities and character strengths activities. 
it's so energizing and so much fun having a group of students, a little committee, you know, designing a character strengths assembly uh, as an example. And often, as it says as that third bullet point, the students give some of the language and some of the activities maybe a bit more street cred uh, rather than hearing it from uh, some old fuddy-duddy teacher. Uh, to have it hearing from their peers. And so these next uh, five or six slides, Ryan, are student slides that they've designed and they've spoken about in assemblies to students. And so uh, next one, you know, the idea of spotting strengths and this is the student committee who they would say embodies the strength of kindness in their group of uh, 220 year 10 students we have at Geelong Grammar School approximately each year. And then a paragon of the strength, and that's Fred Hollows, an Australian and New Zealand kind of eye doctor who has restored sight to millions of people, uh, they say, and it was a, certainly Australian of the year back several years ago. The next one is another example, curiosity, and which students they see uh, embody curiosity in their year level and to recognise those and David Attenborough, uh, many would recognise of course in the image. They came up with the next slide, Ryan, which is fascinating uh, because many schools will at times have a, a pair of twins uh, and we have, you know, I don't think a, a, an over proportion of it, I think we've got currently five sets of twins in our year 10 level. Uh, and, and so they went to a set of twins and said, well, what are your signatures? And to see the closeness of their top five or their signature strengths. And uh, these two twins, the Youngman boys, uh, sharing four uh, of their top five strengths. Next photo in spotting strengths in a staff member. And you can imagine the, um, the sense of um, uh, pride that a staff member feels when a student comes into their classroom and says, can I take a kind of crazy photo of you? Do you know what strengths we see you action? And you know, for interest sake, what is your top strength? We want to do an assembly on it and celebrate some of the staff in our school. And the next one I had to include for you, Ryan, uh, because we certainly do use your book about uh, positive psychology at the movies. And uh, we enjoy at different stages in boarding houses, watching movies and reflecting, of course, on the, the strengths used within it. Uh, we tweaked it last year when we asked students to, well, could you, we're going to kind of do the, a little Oscar night ourselves. And so a committee of students came up with a short list, the Oscar nominations for each of the 24 character strengths. And they used your book, Ryan, and used their own experiences. So once they then came up with the short list, they just made a quick survey monkey survey that they could then send that link around via email to each of the 220 students and each student got to nominate which was their movie that they felt uh, embodied that strength uh, the most. And so this is just a screenshot of the, the nominations for gratitude and for your interest sake, uh, Ryan the Slumdog Millionaire won that as the, the character, uh, the movie that represented the strength of gratitude. Uh, from the student's perspective and then they would click and they would announce the, the winner and we'd watch the trailer for that movie uh, and you can imagine that the engagement of students are seeing enjoyable trailers, enjoyable movies and it brings this kind of language of character strengths very uh, you know, alive to the students I think and into their reality. The next slide shows a whole lot of cranes that the students made and I include this uh, picture purely because it was two year 12 girls who came to me with the idea and we titled it Mindful Remembering and they kind of felt there are so many tragedies in the world and we seem to go from one to the other and then forget um, uh, maybe that you know, there is still so much difficulty in that place where that's occurred. And so this was in response to uh, the tsunami and the earthquake uh, in Japan. Um, and in Asia uh, last year and the students said, well, have you seen on Google how you can kind of roll your mouse across and see the devastation uh, of various uh, communities uh, in Japan? We would like to uh, make some cranes and we'd like to teach the students how to make cranes. We'd like to write a message inside that before we fold the crane and um, we'd like to then hang those cranes in our chapel. You know, for, for a month we, we hung them there. And so, so we still, and this was kind of maybe six months after, this is around October uh, uh, last year, it's actually maybe it's all, but even the year before I'm now thinking right, um, 
and we then sent, we ended up making 3,000 cranes, they were a beautiful visual and we ended up packaging them into the 1,000 cranes and sent them to three different primary schools in Japan, a complete student initiative. Character Strengths Workshops, Ryan, and I'm conscious of the time and just a few slides to go, uh, is the idea of, and such a, a easy idea for staff or students to do, this idea of just preparing a workshop, is what we call them, where a student can choose which workshop they'd like to attend. It could be an afternoon activity, we could dedicate a day to it, and a staff member uh, plans a workshop around exploring that strength. And these next few slides show how an example of what you could do in such a workshop. And so you could ask these questions and have conversations and this idea of write about the strength in six words but you're not allowed to include the word itself. The next slide, Ryan, about it, building a poster and giving time, you know, cutting out, printing off pictures, going to magazines um, and thinking about you know, what fairness, as the example here, looks to them. But then there's the next slide, says asking some challenging questions, you know, particularly depending on the appropriate year level. But for our senior school students to have this conversation, so the strength is kind of called fairness and equity. So are fair and equal the same thing? Take six minutes in a group discussing that and come back with a one minute presentation. And I think many of us would say that of course fair and equal are not always the same through to the, the next slide which kind of shows, well, so if fairness is important and we want to be a fair school, what would fairness look like in our school? And on occasions these strengths workshops have resulted in new actions and new initiatives that the school have undertaken because the students have explored and looked at our school culture through the lens of a particular strength. So they're just some examples. Uh, we also give scenarios if you're coaching a junior school sporting team uh, and you've got more players than can go on the field at one time. What's the fair way to approach that uh, and so on. Just reflecting on the implicit teaching of strengths, uh, Jenny Fox Eadry uh, spoke about kind of the direct and indirect use and we often talk about the explicit teaching of or the implicit teaching. And implicit teaching is just meaning during a history class, during an art class, the language of strengths uh, is used. Quite a lot of our departments have kind of produced lists of how, your, how this uh, subject could nurture these strengths in you and also a list that may go along the lines of how you can action your strengths to help your growth in this subject. And so in the, in the language, uh, 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 academic subjects of language like French, how can you use curiosity to help build your French vocab? How can you use the strength of teamwork to help build your French vocab? And so staff members have developed those lists um, which has been again helpful for our students. The next slide just shows the family tree of strengths. That's now done for us in year eight history. When they talk about family trees and talk about timelines, let's add a richness and a layer to that where you can also ask for what the signature strengths are. And each of those boxes as you click on them expand for justification of the strengths that your family members action. The next slide uh, shows the idea of um, uh, junior school students exploring for us what we have is Anzac Day uh, in remembering um, uh, those who have uh, lost their lives at war in our school community uh, and what strengths would soldiers have to have shown and portrayed. So as I close my talk Ryan with giving some uh, food for thought. Uh, and we might see if any of these questions have come up from the listeners and so on, um, and conscious Ryan that I've, I'm almost over time. Uh, but so these are some of the questions that we need to have rich answers for because these are some of the questions that our students have asked. And hopefully you can recognise the answers from my early talk that, well if you don't like them, remember their values in action so you can of course grow them and nurture them. And no, of course they're not only good because they can be misused, whilst they are good, the correct use of them, there is a shadow side to them. And of course, no, not only your top strengths matter, you need, you'll find situations where you must call upon each of the 24 strengths. Uh, and this idea of strengths and weaknesses, and also on the next slide, Ryan, a rich conversation to have with our community 
Is it more important to know your strengths or to know your weaknesses? Is it more important to play you to your strengths and address your weaknesses? Uh, just last week I gave a presentation to our music sessional staff, so all the staff who teach guitar lessons, piano lessons at the school, uh, and there's 35 of those staff members. Uh, and to hear their take on it. I don't think there necessarily needs to be a right or wrong answer. The, the richness is in the conversation. Uh, and to hear a music teacher say, well, predominantly the way they've got to has been so much about working on their weaknesses and going over and over it again, a specific weakness. But the importance, of course, of understanding your strengths and playing to your strengths uh, is well documented. So I think that can become a rich conversation. So I close, Ryan, with a quote on the next one and it's borrowed from Jenny Fox Eads. Uh, and it's my encouragement to all the listeners that, you know, be playful with your ideas for well-being. And Jenny kind of says, ask you, is it helpful, is it hopeful, is it educational, is it fun, and if it is, then have a go at it, embed it into your culture. Um, and the closing slide, Ryan says, and the way we close all our sessions with our staff, uh, and parents is this idea with a little personal action card and whilst I can't give the listeners a, uh, an action card with the, the well-being continuum encouraging that POS Ed is going to uh, encourage you to shift to the right of the well-being continuum and I'd just say on this action card I'd encourage each listener what's one action from possibly listening to this talk that you go that's one thing I might do today or tomorrow or on the weekend uh, to put that into action and to kind of live this idea of using our character strengths. So I, I, I hope that's been of some, some help Ryan. Well wow Justin, <laughs> that's my best description is wow that was absolutely phenomenal and not only phenomenal in, in that you covered so much but also that you, the creativity from the images and from your stories and examples, the creativity just simply drips from the slides and from your engaging presentation. So thank you so much. And, and, if, and for everybody that's listening, this is a perfect representation of embedding character strengths in the culture. I mean, you, this, this is what this presentation was all about, is how character strengths are a, can be a part of the culture of an entire school or an entire organization, entire system. Geelong Grammar School has done it. That's just so incredibly clear from this presentation. Um, do you have time, Justin, for a couple maybe fairly brief questions? Uh, certainly from my end, all okay. I, I've just woken up for the morning, so I'll just... <laughs> just just warming up. Well, in that case, let's let's go for a few hours with questions and that stuff. Um, we'll, we'll just just maybe a total of five minutes or less, but just a couple quick things. One is going to be one that you know a lot of people ask, and certainly has come up is is um, what have been any any findings uh, from the positive education program, from the character strengths program, findings along the the lines of is it, it lead to any improvements in academics or social skills or etc. Yeah. Are you are you finding anything either from a, a actual data perspective of collecting data or from a yeah. perspective or, or a perspective of just observation qualitative. No, thanks, thanks, Ryan. And you can imagine that that becomes the question that every parent, every visitor to the school ends up asking us. Um, and I could give an entire another hour presentation around this our concept of evaluating and measuring and the effect of. Uh, to give a kind of a, a thirty second, one minute answer, the school started off by saying we believe and trust in the science that Marty Seligman and his colleagues and the positive psychologists around the world had done. And so therefore we did not start with any control group, we did not start through the idea of measurement back in 2008-2009. Anecdotally we have many rich examples of student quotes and uh, examples of where you can see a student speaking in front of an assembly or a parent sharing a story where they've used the language and, and uh, in the home. So in some ways our staff would say uh, we don't necessarily need the data because we can feel it. But of course that answer is no use to encouraging other schools to take it on and governments to take it on and to take wellbeing seriously. So yes, we are tracking our flourishing results through Felicia Huppert's uh, individual flourishing questionnaire and doing that with our staff and students and observing that. But that of course isn't directly measuring our wellbeing program, our positive education program. It's almost a snapshot of our Geelong Grammar School experience. 
And so just this year, Ryan, uh, and literally as we're almost, uh, we've started our three-year longitudinal study that's been taken by an independent research team from Melbourne University and Monash University here in Victoria. Uh, Dr. Diane Vella Broderick, uh, a, a key member of IPA, I, I think currently the secretary of IPA, uh, is the chief investigator of it. Uh, it will track our year nine students for three years. Uh, has a significant battery of online surveys, about 15 different questionnaires we're using, but moves into then experience sampling methodology. Uh, and next week our students up in our Timbertop campus, 50 students will have an iPod uh, that will beep at them at four times each day for a week and we'll try to really get a deeper view of the application of their knowledge of skills and concepts of positive education over the course of three years. And it even moves into, uh, in year 10 and year 11, the students will actually be doing uh, some physiology testing where they'll do saliva testing of cortisol levels. Uh, so we're trying to answer this in, in a rich way uh, about what is the effect of the Geelong Grammar School positive education program on our students. What aspects are working, for whom, how long have they been sustained, what aspects can we improve and so on. So uh, stay tuned because I know Diane Vellabrodic will certainly be writing various uh, scientific journal articles about the findings of our program. Excellent, and yeah, she's a wonderful researcher, so you've, you've got uh, one of the best. Here's another quick question. Um, uh, what has been the, the main or one or two unexpected positive findings from implementing this work? Something that maybe kind of was serendipitous or that surprised you? Yeah, uh, no, nice question. Um, I think a way we'd talk about the shift in our culture, which we wouldn't necessarily have, have kind of uh, guessed, was almost a, a sense of contentment or a sense of calmness a, a amongst uh, that it's brought to our school community. Uh, our Director of Student Welfare, John Hendry, uh, constantly talks about the importance of kindness and forgiveness and runs our entire pastoral care system around those two key tenets. And with that, along with character strengths, with along with this understanding of flow, of understanding the importance of positive emotions, I think what we're finding is we're experiencing a community that is you know, uh, somewhat uh, more content with itself. Uh, and, and given the fast pace of society, I think that's been a lovely, unexpected um, uh, bonus of it. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. Uh, one final question. Um, any, uh, any tips in terms of individuals uh, that are wanting to build in more positive education into their system and into their school system, more character, character strengths work in their system? Any advice on getting buy-in from, from staff or from principals, from administration? Um, you know, obviously, you all have embedded it so deeply in the culture, and it, it took years to, to do that, so someone can't just do it in a, in a week. Yes. But, um, any any kind of initial tips just for the the teacher that's listening in and wanting yeah. to yeah for the buy-in. So I, I think yeah it, it's certainly uh, an ongoing journey and uh, uh, Charlie Scudamore, our vice principal, regularly says to me, "Come on, Justin, you know, enjoy the journey." You know, quite often my mind is two or three years ahead of where I'd like it to where you know our program to be the where it is at the moment. Uh, but so one, to enjoy the journey, to enjoy saying, well, that's only one tiny little aspect that we're putting into our program, but it, that seems to be making a difference. As a school, um, we started with a, a drip feed approach. And so actually all staff members were given two positive psychology books. Uh, now this was back in 2007 and the books were Chris Peterson's Primer in Positive Psychology and Karen Rivich's The Resilience Factor. But there are many fantastic books out there that give an overview of positive psychology. Um, and the idea of just gently bringing staff to it uh, seemed to be effective uh, at our school. Uh, of course, the huge you know, boon to our school to have Marty selling and live with us, to have so many experts come, uh, was certainly a bonus that obviously can't happen at all schools. But if you get a core of staff members who are passionate about well-being, and I'm sure everyone has them, and then to spread the, the reading, 
to spread the creativity. Ryan, you're talking about the creativity in in the kind of presentation, and as you well, well know, you know, ninety nine percent of that creativity has come from our team of staff and students. And so when you look at your school as a group of resources that can grow and develop uh, positive education, uh, I think that's the way forward in, in aim to gently engage the community through passion and enthusiasm and enjoy the journey and try not to get too frustrated like I do sometimes uh, when you want to be further ahead of where you are. <laughs> That's great advice. Well, well, thank you, Justin. And I, yeah, I, on, just on behalf of the the whole Via community, I just want to express such deep appreciation to you for presenting such wonderful wisdom and creativity and such great applications for so many people. May may this work really inspire people around the world. So, so thank you so much, Justin. No, thank you, Ryan. And you know. Th th the idea, the vision for me of the, the similar sharing of ideas and similar sharing of creativity. Imagine the bank of character strengths, activities and applications that we could build together uh, in the years to come. Absolutely. We'll, we'll continue to learn from one another then. Too right, yeah. Thank you, Ryan. Okay, thank you, and have a, have a wonderful rest of the day. Some of us are finishing our day and, and you're beginning yours, so may it be uh, filled with great energy. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ryan. Okay, Pleasure take being care. A, a part of the speaker series. Thank you. Bye bye.